Kirkwood Meadows Public Utility District. Today is Friday, June 12th. Time is 3 o'clock. And I call the meeting to order. Do you have some announcements? Yeah, uh, once again, welcome to the budget session. Uh, this meeting is being fed live over the internet. Uh, and if the public would like to make a comment, please uh, email us as normal. And uh, I'll turn it back over to President Gray. Peter, could you call the roll, please? Uh, Rickard? Here. Andy? O'Grady? Here. Norbert? Here. And Epstein? Here. Okay. So item four is oral communication, public inputs, the opportunity for members of the public to address the board on non-agenda items relating to district business. No action can be taken by the board on matters not appearing on the agenda. If you don't think of any today, we'll have another session tomorrow. <laughs> any public input? My question pertains to the budget. Okay. So we'll move on to 5A, which is uh, new unfinished business and action items. A is the 2016-2020 budget study session. Michael will make a, Michael and Jill will make some presentation comments. Number one, introduction and background, key assumptions. I think Jill will go through the proposed 2015 forecast versus actuals in the 2016 to 20 budget or draft budget. And Michael will discuss what happened, what might happen if we have a decent snow year. And finally, we'll have a general discussion. Is that how you see it going, Michael? Yes, sir. Please pr proceed. So, um, <coughs> as um, uh, President O'Grady mentioned, we're going to make a short presentation. The meeting, the reason for this meeting is the discussion, not the presentation, of course. But um, I'll do an overview of district finances as kind of a, um, a primer for the discussion, make sure everybody remembers how uh, district finances operate. We'll show the results of a poor year, 2015, with a comparison to the 2016 through 2020 budget. And finally, what impact a good snow year, a good sales year, would have on the bottom line. Uh, this presentation is only meant to be a primer for the subsequent discussion and may answer questions in advance. Um, it should only take around 10 or 15 minutes to make the presentation, and then uh, President O'Grady will open it up for questions and general discussion. Um, seems like we've been in the budget process for about six months. Uh, I'd like to thank Joe Campbell in advance for the tremendous effort she had put forth to putting this uh, comprehensive package together. Uh, Stoke staff is hoping by the end of the study session that the board will have a comfort level uh, to approve the budget. Um, the district is divided into two parts. Uh, revenues, uh, the two parts are the government funds, which um, or fire, mosquito, parks and rec, and those are primarily funded through property taxes and also we, we have funds through fire impact fees. So when a new development comes online, we actually charge them an impact fee. Fire also has an assessment fee, which is a monthly charge that you'll see on your books. Those are both uh, um, set up through cost of square foot of a burnable property. Um, we also have enterprise funds, and those are paid by rates, and those are most of the of the projects that you're familiar with seeing with the district. Um, uh, G and A, government and administration, should also be shown as a uh, government fund on this chart. Um, so the um, the goal for the enterprise funds to be self-supported, and that's the goal. One of the goals that was established in the budget strategy sessions. A key assumptions in our budget is the primary factor affecting the five-year budget is the ongoing drought. Uh, we assume that the drought will continue uh, through the next five years, and the baseline for revenue is the average from the fiscal years 2014 and 15, with a small 0.5 percent growth factor um, that could have, would occur through very moderate increase in growth in the valley or, and or a moderate improvement in skier activity, uh, as stated. In the fiscal year ending June 5th, uh, 2015, we saw a revenue drop of 12%. Um, and that's a, that's a key factor of the plan. Um, the plan that we're comparing it to is based on the average of the 2013-14 fiscal years. 
As a result, expected rate decreases in electricity have been deferred. Fixed expenses were reduced in 2014-15 to minimum levels. Opportunities for future expense reductions are primarily through improvements in operating efficiencies, uh, line losses, water losses, etc. And to be conservative, the budget does not assume any improvements. That would be there are no capital improvements budgeted for the 2016 budget. And the other years, uh, 2017, 18, 19, and 20, have all been reduced. Um, here are the rates that we're, um, we're planning. Uh, we'll go, you know, come back to this slide as need be. But you can see that the already approved rate increase for wastewater uh, is included. That happens in uh, 2016. And then we're forecasting a, uh, a water use, consumption, and uh, base rate increases in 2017, 18, and 19, which is a 2% increase. Once again, our goal with rates is to become self-sufficient in our enterprise funds and um, hopefully lower them. Uh, electric use has shown a, um, a decrease over the years from 68 cents down to 65 in 2020. The initial uh, rate decrease that we were hoping for has been deferred and we're looking at stable rates for the 2016 year. Um, the only other rate increase, um, I think that's it. There is a rate increase in propane that's not showed as a bullet line. Um, and, and that uh, in 2017, that goes from um, the 75 to the 82 that we see there. Can I just ask a quick question? Because I can't see. <laughs> <laughs> Under 2017, there's a bunch of words. Under the first two lines. I can't see what the word says. So two percent increase. I got so, this. Uh, okay. I got this earlier. Uh, okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. You can move closer too if you'd like. <laughs> no, that's okay. I'm not sure <laughs> I can move closer. <laughs> so as I mentioned, uh, enterprise funds are funded through rates. Government funds are funded through impact fees and property taxes. Our pa property taxes from come from Alpine County, Amador County, and a small item from. El Dorado County. Uh, property taxes were established by LAFCO when the district was formed in 1985. Alpine County taxes were, are, are budgeted at $675,000 and Amador at $175,000. Our goals for property taxes are the use of our goal or of property taxes as established by uh, the board and um, through the Finance Committee first to be um, to used to ensure that we have the rest tier ratio of 1.05, which is um, mandated by our loan documents, will then be used to cover any cash losses in our departments, the remaining revenues to be used to fund any capital improvements used, and if all the above allocations are covered, property taxes would be used to establish a cash reserve. And then finally, um, budget process, property tax revenues 2016 through 20 assume a 2% increase in those revenues. A general administration expenses are allocated between the departments uh, based on the management's experience and determination with the four main enterprise uh, each receiving 18.25% of G&A expenses. The district's business model has changed with the Out Valley project. We have traded the variable and volatile diesel expense with a predictable debt service. Set expenses such as debt service, power costs, and PG&E O&M costs are now the great majority of total expenses. Operating expenses have come down due to cost-saving measures and the reduction of staffing at the powerhouse. This graph actually shows that reduction and indicates uh, areas where, um, you know, large variances occur. And you'll see, such as in operating expenses, you'll see the, the drop there from 2015 to 16 due to the cost-saving measures and also the, of course, the full year of no operation staffing at the powerhouse. The big drop or the big difference there, you'll see the um, contract services has increased dramatically with the PG&E O&M costs that we're forecasting. Uh, because they'll be charging us for the uh, that O and M charge on the uh, substations. Uh, cost of goods sold, you'll see that uh, 
that drop, that's because of the reduction in the fuel and the corresponding increase in fixed expenses as far as the debt service. Um, and so total expenses has increased due to the increase in expenses and uh, interest expense. So that's a kind of a, uh, a showing how the model for the district has changed. We have two major uh, debt uh, debts that uh, are reflected. Uh, this 2002-12 um, COP, which was, was used to pay for the propane portion of the Mount Utility acquisition, it was used to pay off the loan debts on the vehicle maintenance shop and the employee housing loans, to pay off the previous bond anticipation notes, and pay for the remote read meter project, and finally it was used to pay for the wastewater treatment plant membranes. So this is the debt, uh, the payment schedule for the COP loan. The RUS loan payment schedule is next. It, the RUS loan is for $58 million and was used to purchase the electrical portion of Mountain Utilities. It was used to build the powerhouse and was used to construct the Out Valley Project. Concentrating on the Russ loan payment, one recent change in the 2016-20 budget is related to the RAS, RUS loan. The RUS loan was taken out in a number of loan agreements, each with their own amount, term, and interest rate. And you remember the majority was long term, but we took shorter terms to take advantage of interest rate. The overall weighted average of the interest rate is, is just under 3%. Three of these loans have payoff terms within the budget period. With the cost of the switch station and the overages of the Out Valley project, um, if the district pays off these loans, we run into a negative cash position, which is shown in December of 2018. And we would need to either borrow or not do the switch station, but we would come into a negative cash position in 2018 as shown. However, if we roll over, alternatively, the district could roll over these loans, which is a no-cost option, there's no cost to these loans, and not have to apply for a new loan. The proposed budget that's in front of you today reflects this strategy. The term and corresponding interest rate will be determined by the Finance Committee and the board at the, time, at the rollover date, the first in December of 2017. For presentation purposes and for budget purposes, we've assumed a 35-year term at 4% interest, but we realize that the Finance Committee and board would probably choose a shorter term. Just to, um, in December of 2013, we held a rate strategy workshop and district looks at these principles that we were created back in December of uh, 2013. And just to go through them quickly, um, our goals are to, that each fund operates separately as a standalone entity, and that all, we always include depreciation when measuring fund performance, um, formulate an allocation policy for property taxes early in the year, which we've done, maintain a $2 million operating cash reserve, and establishing a one-year debt service reserve, which is approximately $3 million. Um, set rates and for each fund to cover operating expenses, reserve contribution and capital expenses. This, once again, is a goal, We're reaching towards that goal. And then finally, to lower rates to the greatest expense possible, to actively, actively seeking better operational efficiencies, which we're doing through performance reporting. <clears throat> Some of the goals that uh, the uh, to-do list from that meeting, including developing a five-year plan um, with a profit and loss balance sheet and capital reserve, um, to develop a list of pos possible cost-saving opportunities, research possible revenue and grants not tied to rates, such as grant funds and increased property tax revenues from counties, establish uh, connection fees which adequately uh, cover uh, expenses, and then work, of course, with the Finance Committee on Rate Strategy Principle and Action items. So that is, uh, is basically an overview of our um, the district finances, and now Jill is going to go through the actual budget, the 2016 through 20 budget. Just one quick question, Michael. Mm -hmm. the, the budget, uh, the income expense balance sheet, assume that we do, ro we do roll over those three short-term 
first debt payments. Right. Does the five-year operating cash for, uh, waterfall also make that assumption? There's two. You have two different ones in your okay. packet. There's a combined that does not, not okay, have that, the and one. then there's a second one that okay, does. Thanks. There's one That's that right. we define as rollover. Yeah, to August got it. Right. Okay. Actually, uh, just to change the rules, I mean, that's good background. Do you have any questions, or do you have any questions on the assumptions at this point before we go into the actual budget? I have one. Uh, do you assume 2% increase in property taxes from the counties? Um, what data did you base that on? This finance committee's recommendation. Yeah, I think um, <clears throat> that, that's a good question. Um, we used that, uh, that did come out of a finance committee uh, meeting, and I think that we would <clears throat> we'd need to do a historical, you know, district staff is, is a little concerned with that number that might be a little bit aggressive, but it has raised over the year with the appraisals that we've had. Uh, Alpine County is getting better at doing reappraisals of property and valuations, but um, yeah, that is a um, historical averages, I don't know if they've actually raised by 2%. Michael, but aren't the counties allowed to increase property taxes by 2% per year? Yes. Through the Howard Jar Jarvis Act. Yeah. Right. I mean, so I just thought that was the natural rate of increase. I mean, I know my Al Alpine County property tax increase has gone up 2% every year. Um, and so it just assumes that there's not a recession or something that draws values down and there's reassessments downward, which I know did happen in 2007 The difference between 2% and 1% is $9,000. It's not going to change the budget in any significant way. I have another couple of really general questions. Um, as far as the date by which you must adopt a budget, who sets that date? Um, I don't know if there is a, a controller or, or you know a, a general special district rule on that the the district uh, goal is to set it before the beginning of the fiscal year so uh, we have gone much later um, than that in the past actually we've been into the august periods i believe september november my first year yeah yeah but uh, it's, it's been a goal uh, one of the goals of the the GMOs or the general manager objectives is to get this passed before the beginning. It just makes good fiscal sense, but I don't know of any regulation on that sort. Okay, and then my other question is kind of related to that is, is the district staff actually preparing financials and the budget, or are you using some firm to help you? It's all by district staff. The only outside service we get is through the audit and through the finance committee. So the finance committee helps us, you know, quite a bit with, you know, direction, and then Jill and her staff prepare the budget. Thanks. Sorry. There's one qualification of that, which is that at last week's finance committee, we decided to have a cost-effective third-party review by the district's financial advisor, Randy Finkin, from Perth Southwest. Do you have a question, Nancy? Yeah, it doesn't relate to any of the things that were just said, but my recollection is is that the, on the rest loan, if it gets rolled over, does that balloon get rolled over too? Or is it going to be, um, is there still going to be a balloon, I guess is really my question. And is the, then the balloon is going to be pushed out? Yeah, it does. Yeah. Okay. The, remaining, the remaining debt on it gets refinanced at whatever term we choose in terms of the, the duration of the loan. So assuming 35 years and 4% is certainly probably not what we would do, right. but it's, it certainly is a worst case scenario, or a likely worst case. Okay. It's actually a, an interesting loan in that we're paying principal now, so it's the balloon that gets rolled over. And the good news for us, even though we're dealing with drop conditions, is that we're actually reducing principal a little bit, I believe. Yeah. Any other questions? As long as we have the cash. Right. Well, you were at that meeting. We can't defer. Phil told us we can't oh. defer the principal payments before yeah. the balloon. You want to go on to part two? Great. Um, shown here is just a uh, 
summary of the five-year income statement showing our projected um, net loss at fiscal year end 2015 is at just about seven, uh, 756000 um, That decreases in 2016 to 217000 uh, The two largest reasons for that is um, 2015 for the powerhouse depreciation, we're assuming a 7% um, depreciation rate, and the budget, the next five-year budget assumes a 3.5%, so that decreases that. Um, there's been the cost saving measures in the operating expenses. Um, also, uh, fuel has decreased dramatically with the um, Out Valley project being online. So even though we're paying for um, power purchase, the cost um, still has gone down. Um, we are, as Michael mentioned, um, in revenues assuming a 0.5% um, increase in sales. And we're also using a 1% CPI um, increase in all rates. For operating expenses for the next five years, we're um, using a 1% CPI increase. So that's just a brief summary of um, revenues and expenses. So for 2016, I mean, it, it, it in a way, we're covering, I mean, the projection is that we can cover all of our expenses, including about 90% of depreciation. That's correct. Mm -hmm. And just no capital. There's, besides the switch station, let me, let me make that clear. When I say no capital, I've, I've said that several times. This budget does assume the full construction of the switch station of $2.7 million. But that's not expense, so that wouldn't be part of the income summary. Right. No, right. no, I just want to make that clarification because right. yeah. it is a capital problem. Yeah, we had an interesting meeting, a couple of us, uh, with Supervisor Morgan earlier today. And we were going over some of this material, and she, she, she let us know that the county actually does not budget for depreciation, which is actually quite a choose advocates that they should, but they don't, apparently, which is an interesting thing. I, I just think it's such a healthy thing to do. I'm really glad that we do it, um, even though it makes our net income sometimes not look very rosy. I always look to see, well, how much of depreciation are we covering? If we're covering 90% of depreciation, that seems pretty, pretty decent. Not as decent as we'd like, but pretty decent. Ask the question before you move on. So, what do those numbers tie to? In other words, in the finance committee, you have lots and lots of documents. The and income, the five-year um, income statement by quarter. It's the totals. But I've condensed. You know, it's all revenues in um, one section. All the, the budget shows many more um, categories. Right, but if I if I look at if I look at 2015, I think that number 755, we're, we're projecting a net loss. And if I go to the five-year income statement, where 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 is that number? If I'm missing. Could I need that? On page 21, if you look at 2015 actuals, it's the net income loss, and then you'll see. Um, it's the third from the bottom. Okay. So you're on the five-year waterfall? No, the five-year combined income statement on page 21 of the packet.
I'm looking at what was in the um, finance committee packet, and I'm looking at it within page 40. There's been changes since the finance committee. And I'll, 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 I'll say it right here. That is part of my frustration, is you can't follow along. Just when you think you got your arms around something, and you go, oh, I get it, then the numbers change. And it's, and I, and, um, you mentioned at the finance committee meeting that there was a discrepancy between electric revenues. Right. So that was corrected? Okay. But it, it, it just seems to be a continuing, a continuing issue. So I, I, but I think that's okay. You don't, okay. okay. Um, does the public have access to the board packs for this? Okay. Yeah, they're posted. Okay. Okay. And uh, it's in the board packet that Nancy received. So I'm sorry, we're not, uh, you know, it, it's in the information we sent out to the packet. So I don't understand your comment. And, and it's, pro it's probably what I received. I mean, what Sandy sent out was the, the special, the special agenda for this, this meeting. But I don't think, I never received a packet. And so it's just, it's just understanding your system to be able to, you know. Um. So I'm looking at the finance committee, page 40, which you're looking at, and for 16, that is 217K, which is the number there. Now, you said that things changed, Jill, in 2015. What was the um, I would have to look at exactly. There was um, an issue with electric revenues. Um, I don't know exactly. I don't have the old okay. packet with me. It was 819 versus 755. Um, the, summer, the electric summary had um, different revenues than the combined income statement. Okay. It was, 60, it was 60, a little, little over 63,000 yeah, for electric. And the 17 and 18 look the same here as the finance committee package. So it looks like the one change was uh, in fiscal 15, is that correct? Yeah. Any other questions, comments at this stage? Why don't you keep going, Michael? Um, this is just another uh, summary showing um, the uh, net income or loss per year. Um, basically the same. I um, hope oh, this one wasn't updated. Um, it shows the net income loss, uh, the depreciation expense, um, and the net income loss without depreciation. So, uh, may I just add, do you have the board packet with you? No. Would it be possible Rick for is, Amy or Rick Karen? is making copies right now. Okay, great, thanks. So I wanted to present a slide that would show um, You'll see the 819, you know, misses the $60,000 that we are talking about or previously, but this is more a general view. This slide shows the impact of what a normal snow year and corresponding sales would have on that income. Earlier, I made a point of saying that the, uh, our sales were down by 12% uh, due to the low snow. What if we had more of a normal snow year? What impact would that have? And so what we did is we used a 5% and then a 12% increase on sales on kilowatt hours sold, water, um, wastewater, variable rates only. So we used those sales and times it out by variable rates, which would be those items would have a direct impact on the bottom line. Um, and what we found is that if we had a 5% increase, um, it dramatically impacts our net income, and a 12% even more so, so that a $819,000 loss would be reduced to 546 or 164 as shown, and throughout the years, those numbers would actually become positive, and in 2020, it would have a half a million dollar impact. So um, I think this is an exercise showing what would happen if we had normal snowfall to our bottom line. And 12% uh, isn't normal. It's still below normal. It's the average of the last two years. Yeah. 
Right. If we look at that. Right. So, which is still lighter than average snowfall. So I, I think that the the point being is that this, this budget is a conservative budget. We're all hoping for increased snowfalls, getting back to an average uh, skier count and sales uh, to help impact that bottom line. So uh, with that, I turn it back over to uh, President O'Grady. Um, um, that's the end of the canned presentation. Can you go back one So your, your net income without the depreciation, and then that really covers your debt service, right? I'm trying to get to like the cash. Mm -hmm. right? Can you say louder? I'm sorry, I have to turn I just want to make sure. So you've added back depreciation in 2016, and then you have debt service coming off of that to come up with the cash number. Right. What is that number? Um, yeah, the, that third column, that's just showing you the depreciation that's already included in the net income. I, I understand. Okay. We have a cash flow for the next five years that uh, uh, I can hand you. Uh, if it's in the board pad, I'll, I'll find it. Yeah, it's in the board pad, and it's also uh, here. Uh, this is the five-year cash flow with the rollover that we talked about earlier. And here is our updated operating cash, here is our updated preserved cash okay. for the next five years by court. Yeah. And also on the um, combined income statement, yeah. it has the net loss, it has the um, income loss without depreciation. At the bottom line, there is principal payments okay. added into that Good. or listed. Do you, can you, are you planning to fire that up there? Or can you? This cash statement? Yeah. I know, but I can make uh, copies if you'd like. I just um, think most people understand cash. Yeah, and that's in the uh, packets under pages there, like five and six. So, no, no, go ahead, make copies for that. It's also in there. So then, it should be in five and six. Oh, they're already in the packets under pages five and six. Thank you. No, 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 I don't need So then you're, you're looking at your reserve cash based on this cash flow. Is that adequate? The reserve cash, our goal is one year debt service, and that's $3 million. So it varies depending on the year. If you look through this uh, with the loan rollover, it, uh, it bounces around. Um, it doesn't maintain the $3 million over the entire period, but it does bounce around, and it does allow for the switch station project construction and all of the known costs of the outbound project. So Michael, I'm, I'm sorry if I missed Go it. Ahead. Um, so in that, the depreciation that's up there, that's at the lower rate, the rest, uh, you know, not, not rest. Um, Powerhouse. For 2015, yeah. it's at the 7%. Okay. From 2016 through 20, it's at 3.5%. Okay. Right. Thank you. So, yeah, we could have definite good news if we had a determination on the less depreciation that was effective in November 1st of 2014. It would have an impact on 2015 actuals and forecast. For the benefit of people, can you put the board pack up there or not really? Uh, I don't have it on um, this uh, computer, uh, but we have our copies there. It's to, these are so large that if putting a PDF of that doesn't really help, you kind of have to recreate. Whenever we put in, uh, you remember like about a cost forecast and other ones, and when, when we duplicate Excel spreadsheets on the board, it's hard to read, so we actually reproduce them in PowerPoints so they're easy to read. Okay. Um, so can you go over then the um, cash flows that are in the board pack? Meaning slide three is the five-year operating cash waterfall by quarter. And you have a second one, I think, which uh, assumes... Why don't you go through the cash flows if you want? Okay. Yeah. Does anybody not have a copy that they'd like to get? 
that would like to come. So go for it, Jill. What are we looking at here? Um, the first is the combined um, cash waterfall by detail. Um, that is with the three rest loans uh, maturing as scheduled in December 17, 18, or December 18, 19, and 20, I believe. Or is it 17, 18, 19? It's 17, 18. 17, 18, 19. Um, and it shows that with that, um, in December 2019, we're at a cash low um, of just over $1 million. Um, on the bottom of this combined cash waterfall, it shows our reserve fund. And um, currently it's at about $3.4 I believe. Um, and we're assuming that the $2.7 in switch station is going to be funded out of the reserves, as well as um, the known out valley expense over what we um, drew from reps. We're anticipating the overage to be at 1.7 million. So with that, um, there is not enough money in the reserve fund to cover those expenses. Um, with the rest loans maturing, um, we would still need 1.2 million dollars in December of 2018 um, to cover those costs. So if we did pull that out of operating cash, um, we wouldn't have enough. So that's on page three and four. Um, on page five and six, we then um, did a new forecast if we rolled over the three loans in this five-year term. Um, and again, we used a 4% uh, interest rate at 35 years for those three loans. And with that, um, our cash low is actually in September of 15 um, of just under $2 million. Other than that, our cash low is in September of 19 at $2.3 million. And that does allow for us to pay the full $2.7 million of switch station if needed and cover the out valley cost overage. Um, and we're showing that in September of 18, in December of 18, we're splitting that 1.2 million coming out of operating cash. That's just a brief on that. So this allows for a four-year project, and this is based on a four-year project, not an accelerated project for the switch station installation. So uh, we have to make the decision in the fourth quarter of 2017. And that would be for only one of them. You could, you know, you don't have to do all three. Sure. We're assuming all three, but based on snowfall, or, you know, you might want to roll over one and knock the other two if cash position changes. This budget is based on rolling over all three, but uh, that's why this is a growing living document that next year you can change your mind. Right. And uh, in either case, our low is September of 15. No, December 15. What's the difference in the September 15 and December 15 between the two cash flows? One shows 1.877, the other is 1.771 versus. What page are you on, I'm sorry. Three and presumably five. Okay. The other one shows 1924 and 2465. That's the updated operating oh. forecast. Um, the combined is actually correct. It's the Bank of the West loan um, starting in, uh, it's 7000 a month, um, but in the rollover, um, it's showing one month instead of three months expense in that. I see. Oh, I see. So that means that the real cash flow forecast up through December of 2017 is the first version, right? Correct. So in December 17, we're under, I'm sorry, I should go back to where we list. So page three, we've got one point 877 September 1.771 and then uh, 
Okay, so it's the rest of this year that we're under the two million of cash. Correct. Now you said our goals were two million of operating cash in one year of that's total payments, so that's five million of cash, and we're not even close to that, right? Well, it's two million in operating and three million in, in reserve is our goal from the rate strategy section. But that's really not within view at this point. I mean, in, unless we went out for loan funds, I, I don't, uh, you know. Or got rid of the switch station. Or got rid of the switch station. That's, those are the magic words. Why don't we have an ad hoc committee to get rid of the switch station? You're chairman. I, I'd be happy to be chairman of that committee. Where, where does that cost? I mean, I, I think we, I think the district has produced other spreadsheets regarding it, but. I mean, that's just a projection right now. Right. So I think the cost is, what, Mike, what's your answer to the question? Supposed to be? Yeah, the cost is shown under reserve fund, switch station expense. And if you follow that along on page five, you'll note 25,240 in June of 2015. And then the next expense is in June 16, do you see it there? Oh yeah, yeah. I, but that wasn't my question, I'm sorry, I wasn't clear. What I'm saying is, is how um, solid is that $2.7 million? It's, it's just an estimate right now from exponential engineering. And yeah, I, I don't think it's firm at all, actually. It's a, uh, a, a rough cost, but it's hard to decrease these costs when you look at, you know, when you're dealing with uh, firms that don't, you know, give you true exact costs. It's, it's really hard. Um, one of the good news that we've had out of the PGE negotiations is that they are going to allow us to use our used parts at the switch station. Um, so if we want to move parts from Cam Green down to the new switch station at Salt Springs, they're going to allow us to use all those used parts, which is a good cost savings. There's even a discussion of using the building that's sitting at Cam Green, which is very expensive and has all of their parts and all their relay systems already built in, and if we can carefully move that down to Salt Springs, that could be a real cost savings. Because they've already approved it. They've already, all they'd have to do is change the settings. You, you know, relays, uh, they look for a fault for a certain distance. These relays are now looking down 1.1 miles down to Salt Springs or whatever. That distance would be much shorter with a switch station that's moved down the hill. Uh, so they'd have to change those RTU settings but the use of the actual mechanics and the building and the relays would be a good cost savings. The 2.7 is based on new equipment. Um, you know, certain equipment like the circuit breaker itself, the 115, the 152 that failed in power outage, we would leave that because it's very expensive to move that and we'd build a new one at Salt Springs, but other equipment that might be more transportable, we'd use over. And that, those savings have not So even this year, we've got three and a half million of total cash in September, including the reserve fund, and four million at the end of December. Any other, any questions? Com any further questions? Comments from the audience or the board? Eric, I'm sure you have something to say on the overall budget, or yeah. on a, no? I actually I. I, uh, as requested, I've mailed in about, emailed about a dozen questions in uh, between these last two meetings, and um, resulted in some corrections to spreadsheets, but also some good answers. And what I was really focusing on, other than just making sure I understood the line items, was the ratio of current um, assets to current liabilities throughout. And I, I, saw, I found some funky ones, what I thought were funky ones. And um, uh, I think a lot of that was just the way I was interpreting the current, what's called the current, current portion of long-term debt. The way it's recorded here is that in uh, the first quarter, it's all the full year. The second quarter is only three quarters, the third quarter is only one quarter, and the fourth quarter is no quarters, right? So, oh, it's reflected here, yeah. so basically, the first quarter, 
current liability is carrying the burden of the whole year, which would, even though it's not really due in that quarter. So anyway, but the numbers look a lot better now, I mean, in this version than they did in the last version. So I looked at the current ratios, and then I look at um, how much of depreciation we're covering. And uh, obviously, in the water and wastewater, we're, we're not covering any depreciation, at least in the initial quarters and initial years. But it does get a little bit better uh, subsequently. So that, that just means using property taxes for those that are better, obviously, if we didn't have to do that. Uh, so when, after looking at those things, getting my questions answered, and so on, I, I mean, I think it's an understanding how conservative, what, what we hope is conservative approach, that's a pretty solid budget. Do you have any questions? Comments? No. Well, are we going to, do you want to, uh, do we want to entertain a motion to approve this? The Finance Committee has considered it February, March, April, May, June. Uh, I can think of at least two corrections. One is your slide there needs to say the 170. And Jill, you need to update the uh, rollover cash floor yeah. test. Nancy? So no renewable is a big issue for um, for KMA. And I brought it up to the Finance Committee meeting that when I go back and I look at the projected actuals from 2013-2014 and I look at the projected actuals for 2014-2015 and one of the increases, significant increases was G&A allocations 44,729 um, salaries and wages, and um, operations and maintenance. And so, when, if it's a low snow year, how could those things go up? What's the, I mean, I don't, I don't understand how those things could be increased. So I got your, your email, of course, I, I, um, I, I haven't looked at it specifically. Are you talking about those increases? And what we're talking about is 2013-14 actuals compared to 14-15 actuals in snow removal, two slow, bad snow years. Are you talking that the expenses went down on the dollar volume or a percentage volume? Because remember, we had 25% less business in 2013-14, so of course our expenses would go up in 14-15 based on business volume. If, if that's a, because we had an increase in our volume of business from 425 to 500,000 over the course of that year. So we, with Alpine Smith leaving, we recaptured the contracts. And of course, our O&M contract services and G&A would reflect an increase. I don't know if that's the answer, but that's just a guess off the top of my head. And I, I, you know, now that you say that, I can see where it might. I can show you what it is that, you know. Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll definitely get back to you on that. But off the top of my head, Nancy, I think that that would be a reason why those expenses would go up. These, this budget here is, of course, based on, you know, uh, a conservative snowfall, but snowfall. Right. Right. Not, not a, not a, you know, we're, we're basing everything on a drought, but snow removal is basically a different case. We, we have a set line that, uh, you know, Right now we're looking at $108,000 uh, positive variance in the department, so we're budgeted for a snowfall. So, Nancy, what you were just saying, you don't know if that translates through to uh, a bigger than expected increase for KMA. You're just looking at the overall budget right now. Yeah, I just, I was okay. just looking at the overall. So it's just spread out over yeah. more HOAs. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Yeah. Right. and I can see why that is. But I'll do an in-depth uh, look at that, Nancy. Uh, but I did get your email earlier. So. Do we think we're ready to approve this budget, or do you think we should continue revising? Uh, I thought that was going to be in the regular board meeting, or is it part of this board meeting? 
this uh, This is on the agenda. This oh, okay. can happen uh, tomorrow um, or it can be done today and reaffirmed tomorrow. My view is we maintain cash for five years and assume five years of terrible of bad ground. And uh, we manage through the switch station and we have cash reserves the whole time. And, you know, and there's opportunity for savings, but it comes from finding inefficiencies in the operations. We're not going to save any more money off of labor without sacrificing quality. So I, I, you know, I don't know how to make it any more conservative than, than what it is. Well, so I, I you know, we could right. sort of say last year was the new normal and it's going to be worse, but I don't think that's terribly responsible because I think it's the worst that anybody has seen in cumulative history. That's you, Peter. <laughs> well, it's, right now it's a 30 percent chance of an El Nino. That's what the, oh, the forecast is are forecasting. So that would be better than what we had last year. But this is a 30 percent chance. And they're looking at possibly an 80 percent. Yeah, I don't think it's prudent to assume it's going to be even worse. I agree. When you're, when you're at the low point in snow, it's saying, well, it's just right. going to keep getting worse. Right. I agree. I don't, I don't think that's necessarily the right thing to do, and that's why we have reserves. So we have opportunities to deal with that if, if, you know, if it gets even worse than, than that. Go ahead. I was going to wait until tomorrow because I thought that was when you were going to adopt the budget. But um, so I, I think about you know, I'm, a, I'm a problem solver. Then you a problem, I want to try to find a solution. So I said to myself, okay, there's no other place to get any more revenue. And the only other place I could think to get revenue would be for those visitors that come here to Kirkwood. And I don't know whether the district is permitted to have a sales tax, have a use fee. I mean, I think of KCA, they laid over the community a uh, civic fee. You know, is that something, as you know, time moves on here, that perhaps the Finance Committee could explore? And um, I, I realize indirectly we are, the district is getting you know, revenue by by use, but why not consider a study whether or not a sales tax might be helpful, could possibly fund our capital improvements, possibly could fund the fire department, could possibly, you know, fund reserves. I'm not a fan of taxes, but it's, it's you know, we've all talked about what's the growth for the future, and that was the only solution I could come up with. Do we have that capability? I know that Proposition 218 has to be followed for any increase in assessment fees or taxes. So for water and wastewater, we have to go through the snow removal, uh, the same thing that we were talking about with snow removal, and go through a general election. Uh, for propane and electric, I'm not positive on I, I would assume that that does not go through a, a vote of the, of the public. Um, and the definition of the tax is, you know, uh, is it just a rate increase, or, or what do we what are we taxing? Are we taxing the goods that we're providing? Um, I didn't I didn't think you were describing that. You're just, I think you're describing something that visitors would pay, and it would you wouldn't see it as a homeowner in your utility. I didn't hear that. Otherwise, we could just otherwise it's just a rate increase. Right, 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 right. 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 Yeah. Perfect. So it's a sales. Right. I mean, so it, can you have a sales tax on goods sold? Right. In, the, in our service area. Room up, RO2, room up, occupancy tax, RO2. Well, that would be an example of one. Yeah, so we do receive a portion of the transit occupancy tax that the counties uh, charge as part of our property, well, not property tax revenue, but we do get a portion of that from Alpine and Anna. And it's a true tax on the room rates. So this, this, so yeah, so this is over, over and above. I mean, this is the the goods and the services that people come in here and buy. I don't know who you work for, whether it's a county thing. It's, I think it's a county thing, who in turn works with the state. What the percentage should be, you know, for how long? Um, you know, I think 
in other communities that I've lived in, you know, that's how sometimes police and fire are funded, or gee, they need to do some type of long-term capital spending. And it does come to the voters, but um, you know, if it would help the district, to me it just seems like it's worth a study. Didn't the Forest Service charge some sort of a use fee on the lift tickets? Yeah, the other day was a percentage thing. I think there's other entities that actually tap on to the lift ticket fees. Uh, I know the district isn't one, but there are other. The Forest Service might be one. I think there's others. Uh, of course, uh, KCA. Right, right, right. exactly. And the civic fee is, George, what is it, 3.5%? I think that's an interesting thing to explore for future years or, you know, outside this budget. Uh, you know, I'd be open to either approving the budget now or deferring it until tomorrow. If it's if more people It's show. on the agenda for tomorrow, right? Yeah. yeah. It's on the agenda for public action. Yeah, I understand. I know. I understand what we could do it, but since it's on the agenda for tomorrow, you never know who was going to plan on coming and making a statement tomorrow. I always recommend that we, we wait till tomorrow, and hopefully it will be a very short item, but I, that's what I would recommend, that we wait until tomorrow. Okay. And uh, Bob, is it your sense that we should be approving now or waiting a month? Uh, I don't think there would be anything that we could spend a month on that would make any material change. I think it's been scrapped, you know, if there is sound in it, in it, but it's, uh, I think we're ready. Mm -hmm. so, okay. So, so, anything else on today's agenda? Yeah, I, I had a couple items. I appreciate the Nancy bringing up the, those items for the future, and we've put some thought into the next budget or things that we'd like to look at in the future. One of them being, you know, Nancy's suggestion there, and there's other things that are on our our, our docket that, uh, uh, you know, the uh, independent analysis of debt service management by Randy Thinking is actually. You know, something that the Finance Committee uh, talked about, and uh, that's one thing that we'll be doing kind of like next steps. Uh, the Russ loan changes in term assumption and interest rate. We talked about that December 17, or, you know, the, the Finance Committee will need to make a decision in that matter. Uh, capital connection fee changes. Um, that's an item that we are pursuing, and it is an item that will impact the budget. But uh, for this year, you know, we. We don't have that in there, but we, we stepped back from that. We have gone out to Goodman Consulting for an estimate on looking at our um, electric connection fee charges, and I think you all remember that. A possible change in annual CPI increase to affect variable rates only. Uh, that's a topic. And these are just topics for discussion. These aren't anything that are uh, definite. Can I just elaborate on, on that one? When we made the decision, which was before I was on the board several years ago, to have a, a flat a service fee uh, every, every month uh, on electricity and propane, instead of everything being in the rates, the theory was that even if you don't use electricity, there's, an, there's a cost to just have you connected so you could use it. And there's some argument to that, but it also had the effect of transferring costs from the large customers to the small ones. As you take, you know, everybody pays the same amount, whether you're chair six or you're a condo. Um, and so having those fees continually rise, it keeps shifting costs onto, onto the smaller thing, smaller, smaller, use, smaller uh, consumption. And then if you take all of them, add them up together, you know, it's a hundred dollars if you shut up your house, shut your house off, and don't use anything, you're paying. You know, it's over a hundred dollars, and it just keeps going up. So I just wonder whether the rationale for putting the increase there, as opposed to into the rates, is really the right way. I think it deserves some thought, because having them continually move up. You know, we, if we look at electricity, good good snow years, and the rest of that, the model says we can lower rates a lot. Meanwhile, the fixed cost keeps going up. And if you don't, if you don't use very much, you know, does that make sense? Shouldn't we yeah. put the CPI changes into the variable? And, and they're in both now, aren't they? Yeah. Well, 
I, I think you have to look item by item to say if they're in both, right? Well, currently they're in both. Well, we don't, we're, they're not in the electric rate. We don't, that's not going up by 2%. Oh, they're not in the uh, per kilowatt hour rate. They're not in the per kilowatt hour rate right? in electricity. Yes. Yeah, okay. So it depends. There are in some, there aren't in others. But I, so I, I would think that it might be more equitable to just fix, you know, periodically look at the fixed rate, but have a theory of what it's covering. The original one that I you know, proposed for electricity that it covered 50% of our fixed costs. You know, as an example. Okay. So that, that's where that one comes from. Uh, another one is to reformat how cost of good is presented in the budget and the finances. Financials, that would be diesel costs. Um, and then a big one on these last two is to standardize um, base rates for all services and standardize EDUs. I'll give you an example of what that means. Um, currently, base rates for water and sewer services for commercial properties are adjusted based on uses that commercial properties use over three, there's a three year average and we divide it by a residential EDU. Uh, that is also a topic that we don't do for electric. So a large consumer of electricity, um, Chair 10, pays the same base rate as condominium. While in water, in the same instance, a large user of water may, pays a much higher base rate because it's base, the base rate is also uh, assumes that they're using more of the infrastructure, more of the GNA, and they get a much higher base rate than an electric user. So that's something that we've talked about in the past, and I think should be uh, researched in the future further. So is that the basis for a general manager objective for the next year to reevaluate, rationalize oh, our definitely. rate structure? Definitely. And then there's inconsistencies with base rates for all the services. Um, water base rates are pretty consistent. We're pretty on top of that. But when we, we took over Mountain Utilities, it was basically a base rate per meter. Certain units are mass metered, and they're only receiving one base rate. Uh, the concept would be, you know, is that really fair? Should just because it's one meter and mass metered, shouldn't that each of those individual condominium association participants? Now I'll give you an example. The Meadows has one propane meter. Should they be getting? I know it's only five dollars a person, but this is just just an example, and I think we need to look at all of this. Should, there's 64 units there, should they be paying $5 in base rates, or should they be paying five times 64 and pay the same base rate as a single family dwelling or any other condominium unit? Now that's an example of an inequity in our, in our rates. Uh, just because they don't have a meter doesn't mean that they shouldn't contribute to that charge and lower the charge for the entire community. Every member should pay the base rate. So, Michael, I don't know why this, where, the, where this idea came from, but I thought there was some kind of pre-existing uh, agreement that the district had with the ski operator regarding rates. With the C operator? The ski, yeah, ski, yeah, the ski operator. The ski operator. Whoever it was. The the asset market. purchase agreement for the purchase of not utilities. And it's in our asset purchase agreement that we can't charge the ski resort any larger for variable rate for, uh, you know, like kilowatt hour. We can't charge them more than we could charge any other customer in the valley. So they have to get, I think it's called the lowest rate provision. Mm -hmm. So, and, you know, you'll see in, uh, recent uh, Proposition 218 language that they tried to do that down in San Luis Obispo and charge large users more, and they struck it down because it doesn't cost the district anymore to provide that service. So this is an ongoing thing, but yeah, our APA definitely has a lowest cost uh, guarantee in it, if you want. Does it ever sunset? Well, if the 
if they sell it and don't assign the agreement, then it would sunset. Yeah, it may have happened already. Because the, the district has to approve of the assignment. Oh, okay. Oh, never, it's never even been asked to approve it of an assignment. So. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So there is a little hand <clears throat> We're all friends here. <laughs> right. Okay. Anything else for this meeting? No, I just wanted to bring these up. These are, I think these are, this is a really good list. We'll add to what we've received from the um, public today and continue to work on the, on the budget and standardize it. Well, I'm a big fan of general manager objective to rationalize the rates so we can call it consistent this time next year. I'm sure that'll be on the list. I just want to thank Jill. I mean, a fantastic job, a lot of work. And uh, this last time through, I, I really understood it. Thank you. <laughs> and thanks to the finance committee for putting up with for this for six months. Can you... Um, finalize the budget and put it on the website along with this presentation. And you know, the, the minor errors that we... Great. Thank you. I appreciate all the work and all the effort that goes into the budget. You just don't want the numbers to change, ever. I, it's just like, I'm just, that's just my core brain, you know, it's just like... So I really appreciate all the effort that goes into this. I know it's a big task. Meeting adjourned. Thank you.